Welcome. Welcome to the online worship experience with United Churches of Langley. How wonderful it is to bring this worship experience to you wherever you are all around the world. We've just finished our second week of worship for United Churches of Langley, and so we love that you're joining us Welcome. together this week Welcome as we continue our journey of exploring peace with, with children and youth, but also Welcome that diversity in community. You we heard a story, which you'll hear a little bit later, about all the various gifts that need to be lifted up, that each one of us expressed, and it's the diversity in community that make it so rich and vital to the greater community. And so let's celebrate. Let's celebrate the summer of diversity in community as we worship together. So wherever you are on your spiritual journey, whether it's filled with faith or lots of doubt, whether you feel like you have lots of gifts to offer or wonder, what is that special gift that you have to offer? However you identify, whatever your sexual orientation, please know you are welcome. Welcome to worship with us and to lift up the uniqueness that is you. And so we acknowledge as we gather wherever we are, the two places that we worship in United Churches of Langley, both are on the unceded territory of the Kwantlen the Matsqui, the Keitsi, and the Semiamu people. We walk and honor their stewardship of the land, and we walk in the path of peace and reconciliation with and beside them so that we might forge together a sense of deep, reconciled peace with the first peoples of this land. And so welcome, welcome. Express your uniqueness. Be with us in this worship today. So as we gather in community to celebrate our diversity, we light the light of Christ. In lighting this light, we remember that the light of Christ shines in and through and as all of us that as we open up to the spirit of life itself descending in and through us, we allow the spirit of the Christ to live in us, to express as us. And we light a light to remember this great reality of light of Christ in us.
Many are the gifts given, love is all one. Love's a gift of Jesus. Many are the gifts given, love is all one. We are one in Christ. Many ways to serve God, the Spirit is one. Servant Spirit of Jesus. Many ways to serve God, the Spirit is one. We are one in Christ. Many other members, a body is one. Members all of Jesus. Many other members, the body is one. We are one in Christ. about Jesus and his love for them. Sometimes Paul traveled to share the good news in person. Sometimes he sent letters to teach his friends more about what it meant to be Christian. Together they were part of a new family of people who believed in Jesus. Paul wrote this message to Christians who lived in the city of Corinth. He wanted to help them understand how special the church was, including everyone in it. Here's the other photo. Before I move on to the the church is like a human body. One body has many different parts, but it's still one body. We are many different kinds of people, but we're still one body of believers. If a foot said, because I'm not a hand, I'm not a part of this body, that would be silly. It would still be a part of the body. And if the whole body was an eye, how could it hear or smell? That's silly too. God made our bodies to have lots of parts and each part has something special to do. God made all of our parts to work together. The body of believers is the same. God has given each of you special things to do. Some of you travel to share the news about Jesus, and some of you teach right where you live. Some of you heal the sick or become church leaders. Is everyone a teacher? Is everyone a leader? No, that would be silly too. God made us made us to be different and to do different things to show our love for Jesus. Just like the different parts of one body, we all have different talents and we all work together. God has made each of us very special. There's a quiz show that has been on TV for about 35 years called Jeopardy. Contestants get to choose from six categories up on a board and they're given the answer then they have to record the correct question. For instance, if the category was flags of the world and the answer was it has a red maple leaf, the question would be, what is Canada? That's an easy one. These are much harder when you watch the program. <laughs> Reading the two letters from the Corinthians because it's a whole correspondence that goes on is a little bit like that show. We have a whole bunch of answers, and we have to figure out what that congregation was asking. I can remember when I was very little during the war, World War II, my father was away and my uncle was stationed in the Pacific, and they would send back letters 
to my mother and to my grandmother on these little blue, very thin kinds of paper. They were, it was sort of military correspondence. And they kept those letters, my mother and my grandmother and later an aunt, kept those letters in shoeboxes for years. I wish I had them now because all we've got is kind of answers, but we don't know what questions were being asked. Paul traveled along the coasts of the Aegean Sea, and he stopped at towns and cities, and he identified a few people who would welcome him in that community and help him to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. As each small church, usually meeting in houses, became established, he would move on to another place. When he arrived in Corinth, which was a very large urban center with a diverse population, his presence was at first well received. He intended to stay for a few months, but he ended up being there for about a year and a half. But after he felt that the congregation was finally on the right path, he went off to do the work of the Lord in another place. And that's when all the trouble started. This was a baby church just starting out. And without Paul to guide them, they began to squabble. There were problem characters in that church, as there are in many, who brought their personal way of life and their beliefs to bear on this fragile group. There were conflicts about worship arguments about leadership, immorality, broken relationships, struggles over class and social status, divided attitudes about what was pagan and what wasn't. And, well, you name it, they did it. There was no Zoom contact to give them instant relief. So members began to write of their concerns to Paul asking for advice and spiritual guidance. Sometimes people even came from Corinth and they'd track him down in another city and they would tell him what was going on back home. We don't have any of the questions from the Corinthians. We only have a bunch of very short, profound theological musings from Paul, probably sent at different times, but they're all jumbled together as though they're just one big Christmas letter. Amidst all of this confusion, Paul manages to leave us a legacy of wisdom and holy love that still applies to our own situation and time. These letters are worth keeping in a shoebox or someplace else and reading over and over. They are so pertinent even today that they may astonish us. I have used some of these letters in Bible studies, and the reaction from some people in the group is usually, oh, that's us. In today's reading, Paul wrestles with the problem of how we can honor differences, celebrate our common gifts and preferences, and be at the same time one and many. It's a tall order. It's like trying to pat your head and your tummy at the same time. A healthy faith life is always in tension between who we are as individuals and how we come together to share our gifts, to cooperate, to listen to one another, and ultimately to celebrate with joy being the body of Christ, the beloved children of God. Paul begins by talking about the varieties of spiritual gifts that are found in every congregation. He leads us to the conclusion that all are needed, all are bound together by the same spirit. And then he brings us down to earth, from the spiritual to the physical, and completes his message that we must accept diversity and form an interlocking interdependent organism whether it's our personal body, or our family, our church, our world, or the entire universe of God's creation. Now, we're pretty well acquainted with our bodies. It's something we know about. And there are many parts 
with complementary functions. We care for them. They can be a source of pride or embarrassment, of celebration or frustration. And because Paul loves to make shopping lists, he takes delight in roaming around our physical forms and reminding his readers that we need to make use of and respect every part of ourselves. Of course, he's using this as an illustration for what goes on in the church. There is fighting among the Corinthians for power, for position, for who will do what, for who's going to clean up after a supper, who will preach or teach or prophesy, who's better, richer, more deserving, right or wrong, in or out. Sometimes it may seem as though nothing has changed. We're still the same today. And while we may chuckle at the design of his argument, we must also take it very seriously. We need to ask ourselves, what part am I? What part do I want to be? What part am I called to be in this church, this family of God? Am I the hands doing what is needed? Am I the feet going where I can do good? Am I the eyes seeing where there's a problem? Am I the ears listening with compassion and understanding? Am I the voice proclaiming God's truth? Am I the heart offering love? Paul's intent in this passage is that we realize that every person, every family, every church, every part of our world needs all these things and more. He also recognizes that our variety of gifts can bring divisions among us. But what would we be, he asks, if we were all the same? Boring. Paul calls for the church to be something better, something richer, something that is perhaps new and exciting, challenging and risky, scary and joyful all at the same time. He calls for a celebration of diversity and demands that we recognize each person as special and valuable in the community. Brian P Peterson in Working Preacher said, diversity within the church is not a problem to be avoided, solved, or managed, but a gift of God's grace and a sign of the Spirit at work. The differing gifts of the Spirit form us in such a way that we do and indeed must belong to one another. Paul reminds us that we need to have equal respect for each member of this sacred body. And in today's world, we sometimes have to struggle to remember that. Rich and poor, male, female, transgender, gay and straight, people of different heritage and national origin, faith practices, citizens and immigrants, the homeless, the addicts, people with physical and mental challenges, all have a place in God's great plan. They deserve respect, acceptance, and should all be valued because we are precious in God's sight. It's hard to be faithful, but holy diversity is an important remedy for our tendency to be complacent. The health of the body means that those in need, those who are different from the majority, need to be treated with special care and respect. This is a vision of the kingdom. This is what strengthens us, unifies us, so that we can do the important work that God has set out for us. In a world that seems to be increasingly polarized, where walls are being built instead of bridges, God calls us to take a leap of faith and share our gifts and our love because we're all in this together and we can be stronger because of it. 
Right now, we're being challenged as the church in ways that we could never have imagined six months ago. We are all apart today, unable to worship together in our beloved sacred spaces, to join our voices in praise, to hold hands and feel another's warmth. We are isolated and it may feel as though the body has been fragmented, broken like Humpty Dumpty, and will never be put back together again. But we are being given the opportunity to become a new thing, to open ourselves to new possibilities, to find new ways to celebrate God's presence in our lives. The news is often so full of negative events, the riots, the problems with law enforcement, the concerns about the environment, the spread of the dreaded COVID-19, the inequality of medical treatment of those less privileged, of political unrest and many accusations. And sometimes we seem to be in a world that is engaged in a competition to see who can get the most out of this situation. Who will come up with the first vaccine? How much money will that company make? Who should get treated? Which country is most successful in combating the virus? Who's better? Who's best? Who's failing? This is a time to join together, to use our differences as gifts, not to judge so that we can be made to feel better. It's a time to promote healing and to use the gifts that Paul talks about to reach out and join together. In a very early part of the first letter to the Corinthian community, Paul reminds them that they are a baby church, just starting out. And he says, I could not speak to you as spiritual people, but rather as people of the flesh, as infants in Christ. I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for solid food. Even now you are still not ready, for you are still of the flesh. As long as there is jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not of the flesh behaving according to human inclination? This is at the beginning, and he's a little annoyed with them. But I have been gratified over and over again to see that this congregation is not a baby church. We may be relatively new as the United Churches of Langley. We merged only a few years ago, but we have behaved as adults in the spirit. We try to put aside jealousy and quarreling and solve our differences with patience and care and kindness. It may take a little longer, but it's worth it. Through all the changes in our ministry, in our staffing, in our building arrangements, we have acted with compassion and understanding and holy love. We have moved the spaces around in our hearts to welcome others. We have met the challenges with faithful certainty in the presence of God among us. And so as we face the coming months, coping with the disease, searching for new and renewed leadership possibilities, looking forward to a time when we can become once again fully engaged in the community around us, we can draw strength from one another's gifts and determination and from the assurance that we are truly members of the body of Christ, unified in our diversity, joyful in our celebrations, balanced and healthy and whole as a group of God's beloved people. Amen.
of the earth. We are one body in this one Lord. Gentile or Jew, servant or free, woman or which we bless and we though many throughout the earth we are one body in this one Lord many the gifts many the Prayer shawl group meets weekly on Thursdays to knit and crochet shawls, lap blankets, and small prayer squares, to pray for those in need, and to share our own concerns and stories as companions on this journey. Three or four times a year, the shawls and the squares are blessed during worship so that others in the congregation can add their prayers of comfort. There's about 10 or 12 people involved in the weekly meetings, and others contribute shawls as silent partners. They're given out to people in the congregations as well as to others in the community who are in need of comfort. And as we began our self-isolation, I began to send weekly messages to the prayer shawl group, just little encouraging things asking them to remember that on Thursday mornings, we should still gather if we could, light a candle, say a prayer, and we would be unified in our love. From Receivers of a Shawl, thank you for the beautiful prayer shawl that you constructed for me. The colors are beautiful. Keep up the good work. Please give my thanks for the most beautiful prayer shawl. It's on my chair for evenings. The work and prayers are outstanding. With appreciation and gratitude, this shawl will always remind me of my mother. She will be missed but not forgotten. Thank you. From a member of the shawl group, when I'm away, I miss prayer shawl very much. The camaraderie as well as the inspiration and friendship of the other knitters. We are a compatible group, always welcoming to new members. I gave a shawl to a friend who was going through a time of crisis. When I put it around her shoulders, tears came. It was the first time that she was able to cry. The shawl helped to relieve her grief. So as you just saw, we have a beautiful ministry of pastoral care that includes knitting shawls for many people. From beautiful squares that are little prayer squares to beautiful shawls that wrap around and comfort those who may have a loved one who has died or just need a little extra sense of comfort. 
And so how wonderful it is with your support from two United Churches of Langley that we're able to continue to do such ministries. Our knitters have been knitting by themselves in their homes, keeping up with the inventory of beautiful blessed shawls, and now are contemplating how in the fall they might be able to gather again in safely in our chapel right here. And so how wonderful it is. So I just wanna say give generously so that we can continue to do all these amazing ministries through United Churches of Langley. And so as you know, there's many ways that you can give. You can give through the link to GivePoint, where you just select You Call Ministry and Mission, or you can send an e-transfer to transfers at youcall.ca, or you can drop by a check into the mailbox at the side office of the church. However you choose to give, we give you thanks for your generosity, for supporting all of the ministries of United Churches of Langley. God of all creation, we bring our prayers of thanksgiving to you as we appreciate the gifts you have given us and the many ways in which you call us to be your people. We thank you for the diversity of our congregation, for the mix of cultures and faiths in our community, for all the ways in which we can see the reflections of your grace. Mindful of this great richness of the human spirit, we pray that we will continue to grow in understanding and generosity so that we can go forward as your beloved people, offering hospitality and using all our talents to come closer to the kingdom. Help us to be the hands that serve others in need. And may we continue to share with those who are homeless and hungry and unemployed. Help us to be the feet that lead to good works, to go when we can into the community to search out those who need our care, to continue to make contact with the housebound, the ill, and the bereaved. Today, in a moment of silence, we offer you the names of those we love who are in special need of our attention. Help us to use our eyes to see the pain in the world as we pray for countries in conflict, for refugees and those who are suffering from illness. Help us to be the ears that listen with compassion to those who have no other source of comfort when they are isolated or alone. Help us to use our hearts to offer love and friendship, to find strength, delight in being creative, to try out new things, to make new friends, to offer our ideas so that we may change and grow to reflect your glory. Gather us together, God, to risk the unknown, to unite as one, even as we honor diversity, and to be the light that heals and brings wholeness to the world. In the name of the Christ, amen. And we join together in the prayer that Jesus offered us as this immensely diverse human family. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
that binds our hearts in Christian love, the unity of heart and mind is like to that above. Before our Maker's throne, we pour our heart and prayers, our fears, our hopes, our aims are one, our comforts and our cares. We share each other's woes, each other's burdens bear, and often for each other flows the sympathizing tear. This glorious hope revives our courage on the way that we shall live in perfect love in God's eternal Go from this time of worship into your daily lives. Go to share the gifts of the Spirit that have been showered upon you. Go to celebrate our oneness and diversity. And may you find new strength this day in your home and in our faith community so that healing and health, challenge and promise become our way of life as we walk together in the name of the Christ, amen. Thank you. 